In this video, we're going to start on the Infinite Algebra 1 free worksheets from CUDA software. We're going to do the one-step equations, and we're going to do numbers 1 through 14. Our directions for this worksheet is to solve each equation. For number 1, we have 26 is equal to 8 plus v. In order to solve this, we need to isolate this v. And what that means is we need to get that v by itself. Currently, we have that 26 equals the value 8 plus v, but we don't know what v is, and that's what we're solving for. We need to rewrite this in order to say v equals some quantity, or some quantity is equal to v. So we need to get v by itself on one side of the equal sign. In order to do that for number 1, we need to move this 8. You can see that the 8 is added to the v, so in order to remove it, we're simply going to subtract the 8. What that will leave us with is 0 plus v, which we know is simply v. However, if we subtract 8 from one side of the equation, we have to subtract 8 from the other side of the equation. But why is that? You always hear whatever you do to the right, you also have to do to the left, or vice versa. This is because that currently we have this value of 8 plus v, and that is equal to this 26. If we subtract 8 from one of the quantities, if they were equal, we also have to subtract 8 from the other quantity so that they still remain equal. Let me show you why this is making our own equation. We're going to say 5 equals 2 plus 3. If we subtract 2, from one side, we're going to get 0 plus 3. But we know that that's not equal to 5, because that would be 3. But if we subtract 2 from this side as well, since 5 is equal to 2 plus 3, if we remove this 2, we have to remove it from the 5 to get 3. And we know that 3 is equal to 3. So in this instance, we isolated the 3 on the right hand side, but we need to do the same thing for that variable v. So now that we have a little bit more of an understanding of why when we subtract or add or change something on one side of the equation, we have to do the same to the other, let's go ahead and subtract that 8 from the left side of the equation. 26 minus 8 is going to leave us with 18. So we have that 18 is equal to 0 plus v, so 18 is equal to v. And I find it helpful, especially when you're starting out, to keep your equal sign lined up vertically. Let's go on to number 2. In number 2, our variable is p, so we have to solve for p. 3 is added to p, and that is equal to 8. We need to subtract the 3 to get the p by itself. And whatever we do to the left, we know that we must also do to the right. If we're subtracting 3 from the quantity 3 plus p, which is equal to 8, if we're taking away that 3, we must also take away the 3 from the 8. So when we subtract the 3 from one side, we're left with 0 plus p, and that's equal to, now we subtract the 3 from the other side, 8 minus 3 is 5. 0 plus p is simply p, and that is equal to 5. So our answer for number 2 is 5. Number 3, we're isolating the b, so we have to get the b all by itself. We're going to do that by subtracting 15. Subtract it from the left side of the equation, and subtract it from the right side. 15 minus 15 we know is going to be 0, so that's going to leave us with b, and 23 minus 15 is 8. b is equal to 8. Number 4, we have negative 15 plus n is equivalent to negative 9. We're doing the same thing even with negatives. We're subtracting that negative 15 to isolate the n. However, when you subtract negative, it is the same as adding a positive. So if we subtracted a negative 15, that's really the same as adding 15. 
and we know that negative 15 plus 15 is zero. So that's going to leave us with n on our left side of the equation. And then if we add 15 to the right, we are going to get negative nine plus 15, which is equal to six. So n is equal to six. And I'll show you a simple way to double check. We know that n is equal to six, or at least that is the answer we got when we did out our work. So to make sure that our work is sound, we're going to go ahead and take the six and plug it back in for the variable n. So we're going to have negative 15 plus six, and we're going to solve what that's equal for. We need to see if it's equal to this negative nine. Negative 15 plus six is indeed a negative nine. So our answer checks out. For number five, we have m plus four is equal to negative 12. We need to isolate the m, so we're going to subtract four from both sides, because whatever we do to the left, we do to the right and vice versa. Four minus four is going to leave us with zero, so we're left with m on the left-hand side, and negative 12 minus four is going to be a negative 16. Now for number six, it switches up our operation. Now we have a variable minus a quantity as opposed to adding a quantity, but we're still isolating this x, trying to get it by itself. So we need to create x plus or x minus the value of zero because x plus zero or x minus zero is just x. In order to remove this seven from the left or make it into a zero, essentially, we're going to add seven to both sides. Because if we were to rewrite the left side, we would have x plus a negative seven. And remember, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So if we add seven to the left, we're going to add seven to the right. Negative seven plus seven is simply zero. So we're going to have x equal to 20. Number seven, m minus nine is equal to negative 13. I'm going to start by rewriting this as m plus a negative nine, just so that you can see that that nine is not positive since we're removing nine from this value m. So whatever this variable m is equal to, we're removing nine from it. So it's the same as adding a negative nine. And that is equal to negative 13. So we're going to subtract this negative nine. And subtracting a negative is the same as adding the positive. So adding positive nine to both sides, we're going to be left with m is equal to negative 13 plus nine, which is equal to negative four. Number eight, p minus six is equal to negative five. We're going to add six to both sides. Since you can picture this as adding a negative six and subtracting that negative would be adding the positive. So adding six will leave us with a zero. So we will have p on the left hand side and adding six to the right we will get a value of positive one. V minus 15 is equal to negative 27. If we add 15, that's going to give us zero. So we have V minus zero, which we know is V, and that's going to be equal is a negative 12. So V is equal to negative 12 for number nine. Number 10, we have n plus 16, so we're isolating this n, and we're going to do that by subtracting 16 from both sides. That will leave us with n is equal to nine minus 16 is a negative seven. Number 11, as opposed to addition or subtraction, we now have multiplication. However, even though we're changing the operation, we're still isolating this x because we want x by itself in order to find out what that variable x is equivalent to. Now, when we added or subtracted, 
we needed to have x plus a zero or x minus a zero since that was equal to x. When you multiply or divide, you need to have x multiplied by one or x divided by one. So let me go ahead and write that out. So as you see, for addition or subtraction, x plus zero is equal to x, x minus zero is equal to x. For multiplication and division, it's a little bit different. x times one is equal to x, or x divided by one is equal to x. So we need to figure out a way to get this x to be multiplied by one. Well, if we divide by this eight, eight divided by eight is one. So that's going to leave us with one times x, which we know is x. But remember, whatever we do to the right, we also do to the left. So we're going to divide this 104, which is negative, by eight. That's going to give us a negative 13. So x is equal to negative 13, or you can say that negative 13 equals x. Number 12, we're going to divide by 14. 14 divided by 14 is one, so we're left with one times b is equal to negative 56 divided by 14, which is a negative four. One times b is b, and b is equal to negative four. For number 13, we have negative six is equal to b divided by 18. Looking back up at the equations that I wrote, we need to have x times one or x divided by one in order to have that value x, or in this case, that variable b. So if we multiply the right hand side by 18 divided by one, we're taking this denominator and putting it as a numerator over one, which we know 18 over one is really equal to 18. So for this, we're going to have b times 18 over 18 times one. Remember, multiplication is commutative. So we can write b times 18 over one times 18. Well, this is the same as b over one times 18 over 18. We know that b divided by one is simply b, and we know that 18 divided by 18 is one. So b times one will give us b. And remember, whatever we do to the right side of the equation, we have to do to the left. So we started out by multiplying by positive 18 over one, which is the same as the whole number 18. So we're gonna do 18 times negative six, which will give us a negative 108. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this down since negative 108 does not change. So negative 108 is equal to B. And up here you can see that the 18s will cancel each other out to be simply one and B times one or B divided by one is just B. So negative 108 is equal to B. Let's move on to 14, which will be the last problem we do in this video. We're going to isolate the N by dividing by 10. And if you divide by 10 on the left, you divide by 10 on the right. So N is equal to 40 divided by 10, which is four. Remember to go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and subscribe to my channel. And if you need a more in-depth explanation on solving one-step equations, go ahead and look at my tutorial section on YouTube.